Hey guys, so welcome uh, to, well, live, my first live outing for the uh, Property News. So I'm going to be doing this uh, every week now because I think, you know, going to live saves a lot of editing time, saves a lot of, you know, I can put more time into researching. But the great thing is, um, you know, with technology now is, is you can do this and it's fantastic. You can put it on multiple platforms. Um, so yeah, so if something's gone wrong, I will work it out and, and do it for next week. But um, yeah, so first time here and um, yeah, welcome. So this week... In uh, property news, actually, to be fair, it's again a mixed bag. You know, we had um, the first article was you know basically saying that you know London prices dipped lowest they've been in nine years. You know, and really, it's been one of these things where, you know, how do you read this? I mean, look, the the cyclical style of the market is just for me. Forget all the um the the white noise that's in the background. The real key here is the fact that. It is a cyclical market. London, prime central London has gone up and gone up incredibly. And now it's sort of tapered off a bit. But now what you're seeing is it's actually starting to come back, which is what you would expect. It's exactly what you'd expect from a cyclical market. I think that's the key here. You know, we can all sit here and say, oh, Brexit this and, you know, tax changes this and mortgage restrictions this and all the things that are going on. But the reality is, is actually what we're looking at for the most part is you know a cyclical market from there you know so you know we've got this article here which is you know house prices dip for leading you know late summer sale if you like and you know what you're going to realize with this dip okay this is the office of national uh, national statistics you know um that have come out and basically said yep they've dropped to a uh, a um you know nine year low since 2009 you know the worst since they've been the reality is it's cyclical okay we expect this there's nothing here that's untoward all right and you know, the, the, as much as they want to make it out as being something separate and something different, it, it's just not. You know, and and look, the reality is a lot more people are now starting to get worried about Brexit and what's going to happen. So we're seeing more inquiries about sales. You know what? They are the people that you're going to be able to take opportunity of because they're happy to sell in there, but well, they're not probably happy, but they're going to get rid of it and they're going to accept a discount. So we're actually going in at lower prices now. So if you are buying and you're in the market, you can demand a better price. Now, if you're not demanding a better price, well, get your head screwed on and you know learn how to negotiate. But the reality is the bargains are starting to be out there. But, okay, now I'm talking about London here. You know, and, and look, there's so much negative going on, but look, the reality is, you know, even Mark Carney's worst case scenario, you know, a 35% drop, effectively, he predicted. Worst case, okay? But now all the articles have come out. He, he said that last week is when I was talking about it. Now they've all the articles come out saying it's highly unlikely. And you know what? I think it's, you know, I don't see it happening. I don't see the scenario where that happens unless it really is worst case scenario and everything happens, you know, that could the worst possible thing that could happen in every respect. You know, I just don't see that. And certainly not in the London market, which I see for the last three or four years has been tapering off, you know, even though you may be looking there and reading the newspapers thinking that, oh no, but it's only just started dropping, you know, six months ago or something. That's rubbish, okay? We've been negotiating better prices for the last three or four years, depending on where you look at. In fact, now there's very little stock in prime central London. So actually the developers and the people we're dealing with aren't prepared to negotiate. They can hold on to it. You know, they're not concerned about rising interest rates too much and they're not concerned about Brexit too much because everything negative that has been said about Brexit actually turns out to be, you know, it hasn't been that bad actually. So it's one of these sort of things where you you know, you've got to really um, wonder, you know, is it likely to have worst case scenario? I just don't see it. And, and, you know, I don't see it in any stretch of the imagination right now. Okay. You know, we can look at, um, you know, the alternative, which is house prices return to growth amid signs, you know, of London recovery. Hold on a sec. You know, we're predicting a third drop and we're predicting that, you know, worst house prices in, you know, in nine years. And yet another article comes out. Why? Because this is a different measure. That was the Office of National Statistics. This is right move. So you can look at this and sort of say, well, hold on, who do I believe? What's the truth? You know, and this is the problem with the media and when you read newspapers and you only read the headline, okay? I can show you every week a positive and a negative headline. I just have, okay? You've got to get over that and you've got to realize that this is the game they play to sell the newspaper, to grab your eyeballs, which is all they want, okay? Now, you know, the reality is that if you go outside London, what you're going to see in Birmingham and Manchester and even Leeds and places like this, and I'm talking cities, and, and you know, I'm now sort of talking about the fact that we used to have one world city in the UK, which was London, 
okay? We've now got three, which is Manchester and Birmingham, okay? You know, you look at the direct flights coming in, you look at the investment coming in, you look at all the things that are happening, and really, that's where your investment dollars or pounds should be going, because they are world cities. The fundamentals there are so fantastic. And, you know, I've been walking the streets, you know, recently, and in the last sort of six months of these places, and it's amazing how much is going on there. And I think that's the key to all of this is just what's going on, the investment going in, the properties being built, the university's expansion, the, the medical, the, you know, all this sort of thing that's happening. You know, it's not just lots and lots of properties being built. The reality is step outside into the towns, and this is what I think the cities are stealing from the towns because the youth don't want to stay there. There's nothing for them. So what's happening? They're moving into the cities. They're going to university in the cities. They're staying around in the cities, but then they're not going back home. So their mum and dad are left there to age. And what you're getting is the aging population, you know, that those baby boomers that are approaching retirement and at retirement that now are going to get older. And what happens? The investment's not there. There's no reason for property to increase in capital. So realistically, should you be investing there? No, I would recommend not, okay? So it's, it's an interesting thing because I think, you know, this whole game is a cyclical game. You know, right now the game is, if you look at it, you know, London, you know, yeah, you might say, well, I don't, actually, I don't want to invest there. I want to wait until Brexit happens. Great, you know, no problems. The reality is you might miss some bargains because by the time you do get in, and by the time everyone realizes that actually it's not as bad, you'll probably find that, you know what, it's actually um, back to being a pretty good market and you've already missed out on those bargains, you know. But when you go to Manchester and you go to, you know, Birmingham, those, again, are cyclical markets. And right now, they're doing really well and things are looking really good. And right now, you know, I mean, certain areas in some of those areas, I'm thinking, you know what, prices are starting to get a bit up, but there's plenty of other bargains and opportunities, you know, so you might just not look in the city center, you might go a little bit further out, you know, not too far out, I'm not talking about getting way out of town, what I'm talking about is you find where the fundamentals are changing, and that's where you look to invest. So, you know, that that's really, you know, there's huge opportunities there, huge opportunities. So, moving on to our Brexit, because we always love to talk about Brexit, no, we don't, um, you know, Brussels panic um, as May holds Trump's or announced. So this could be an interesting turn. And we're starting to see this now where it's all been the EU's way and they've really been dictating terms absolutely 100%. And really, we've been sitting there taking it and infighting, you know, too busy focused amongst ourselves rather than actually the, the task at hand. But now we're starting to see things happen. And, you know, and I have to say, I don't often agree with Theresa May, but she's just come out with this, you know, the, the reality is she says, said, hold your nerve to the ministers. And I think that's a pretty good um, thing to say, if I have to be honest. You know, I think we're at the stage now where, you know, we've, we've got to push things through. And there's a lot getting done in the background. But what we need to do is we need to get, there's a few sticking points where, you know, there's going to have to be some give and take. You know, and I think nobody knows how this will end. My prediction is, which I've sort of talked about, is that I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as bad as everyone thinks. I think we will get a plan because if you think about it, what are politicians about? Politicians really these days don't seem to care about you and I. They don't care about the, the wider economy and things like that. What they care about is getting voted back in. That's their number one priority. And yeah, okay, once they've sorted that, then maybe they'll put some thought into us. Okay, so... What's the worst thing for them as a politician is to have a no deal Brexit. Whether that be in the EU or whether that be in the UK, you know, they don't want that. No politician wants that level of uncertainty. No politician wants to be leveled with the, you know, you didn't do a deal and look what happened, you're out. Yeah, that's not what they want. So I, my prediction is they will get a, a deal. Yeah, they will get a deal. The deal may not be the most beautiful deal in the world. Politically, it may not be the most wonderful deal, but actually what it will be is a deal that will get us through and actually it won't be anywhere near as bad. And what you'll find is then all the people who have priced in a no deal, bad Brexit, you know, terrible things happening, what will happen is it'll reprice the market. And we may actually see a pretty good time for property and for investors after that. Now, there is gonna, it's gonna be a dog's breakfast. There's no doubt about that. So I think, you know, the six months after will be a dog's breakfast as we, as we try and work things out in that. So I'm not saying that it's you know, gonna be all beautiful and lovely. Absolutely not. In fact, the opposite. But I do not think we'll see 35% drops. 
I don't think see I don't think we'll see things that bad. All right, guys. So just to finish off, I just if you haven't, you know, and you're watching this from YouTube or whatever, you know, you can always jump on the website. There's lots of articles, and there's about 40 articles a, a month that I'm writing all about property, anything you possibly want. We've got 150 investment guides. So, you know, jump on that, sign up, and you'll get the access to those, full access to those, as well as, of course, you can join my YouTube channel. Simply go to Brett's Property Rants and um, subscribe, and you'll get that all this directly in the inner box, as well as all my other property rants and property education there in one place. All right, guys, have a great day and live with passion.